example. Well, let me give you an important example. In the past, the plans we made really relied on doctor's offices and the public health departments giving vaccines. But we've expanded that dramatically now to a full public-private partnership. So right now, vaccines are being given in doctor's office. They are being given by health departments in mass clinics. They're also being given in many school clinics. They're being given by employers. And very importantly, we've en enrolled the retail pharmacies, the CVSs, the Walmarts, the Targets, in giving vaccine. So we've really expanded our capacity to reach the public. And all those avenues that we're now using are going to be available for us in any future incident, such as an anthrax attack, where we could give antibiotics in all those settings also. So the fact that we have this H1N1 right now has allowed us to pull those plans out and really develop them and implement them and learn where they need to be improved. Well, this takes place in a very tough economy where there are multiple cutbacks at the state level and cutbacks in federal funding. And so we just don't have the workforce we had even a few years ago. And that means we have to pull nurses from other clinics where they may be giving children vaccines or caring for children with serious illnesses, or we have to pull our laboratory people, or epidemiologists, and move them into this H1N1 response. So services in other areas are being cut back, they're being delayed, not as many people are being served so that we can respond to this emergency right now. There's been dramatic effects on the states. The state economies are terrible right now, and we are seeing cutbacks of 25, 30 percent to state public health agencies. That means many jobs and professionals are being lost, many layoffs, many programs being scaled back, services being delayed. It's been dramatic, and unfortunately, it's going to continue over the next several years. The biggest issue we face with federal funding is it isn't sustainable and ongoing. It's as if we take an approach that there's a riot, so let's hire police. Or there's a public health emergency, so now let's give them some one-time money. And when that emergency goes away, the money goes away. And so we don't maintain the professionals and the systems so this country is prepared at all times. The example I'll give you is that there was an appropriation made in 2006 for pandemic influenza. However, that money was fully expended a year ago before this outbreak. So in the 10 months before the outbreak, we had no money to prepare. And it wasn't until we had the H1N1 pandemic that once again we had money. That meant we no longer had the professionals in place, the systems in place to respond as we needed to. Frankly, it was very tough. In the springtime, we didn't have funding. And therefore, people pulled many hours of overtime, working seven days a week for weeks on end. Um, we had people that were being pulled from their normal jobs to work on the, on the preparedness uh, and the response. We had other people who would worked their normal jobs and on top of that took on the preparedness response. So frankly, it got to a point in the spring where we were burning out. And fortunately, Congress and the administration recognized that and appropriated funding uh, so that we could continue the excellent response to protect the public. We've clearly learned uh, that we have underfunded the public health system in this country for far too many years. And so there are many areas we need to invest in on a sustainable, in a sustainable manner. First of all, we need to make sure that we can detect where there's an outbreak and how sick a community is and the people in those communities are so we can get in there and help those people right away. We need to improve that. Secondly, we need to make sure we have the public health nurses and doctors and epidemiologists and professionals who can actually respond and meet the public's need. We don't have enough people in that area. And thirdly, we need to really improve our systems around vaccines so we can reach out to a child with asthma and make sure they get the vaccine so that we can track someone and, and uh, tell a mom it's time for your kid to come in for their second shot. We don't have good systems like in this country, and we would be far better off if we did. Public health and the health of our people is a matter of national security. And national security traditionally is a federal responsibility. So we need to recognize that the federal government does need to have continued ongoing support for the public health system and public health professionals so we can protect the American people. It may be a terrorist act in which clearly people would say, oh, that's an overseas attack on us, anthrax, whatever it happens to be. Of course, that's a federal responsibility. But even the pandemics that we have or the hurricanes we have 
those are national security issues. Public health is a national security issue. So we do need that sustainable federal investment over the years. Well, it's very important that we develop a culture of preparedness in this country so that every individual, every family, every community, every employer, every school make sure that they have a plan and are ready for whatever happens. That could be a hurricane, it could be an ice storm, it could be a pandemic, it could be an anthrax attack. Every one of us needs to take responsibility. This isn't simply a government response. So I think for all of us to do that is what we really need in this country. It's very gratifying to see how the President and many members of Congress have talked about the importance of prevention in public health and in fact are supporting that in the health reform bills. Uh, there is money both to set national goals for what the public's health should be. There's also funding to support the public health system to make sure we have what we need both for preparedness, whether it's an emergency, but importantly to deal with issues such as chronic disease which kill far more people than a preparedness incident does. So um, we are hoping that when we're done, we will see finally uh, ongoing funding for public health, and uh, we thank Congress and the administration for that.